The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. <clears throat> then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or one, what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. What profit will there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Those words of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew are become the center of the readings today to forfeit one's life against the culture that we live in today that tells us that we must seek fulfillment in the self. We are a challenge to find fulfillment in God. It is in giving oneself that love becomes a reality for us. That's something that was hard for Peter to understand in the gospel because perhaps he was thinking that human men, human beings do. We see that in Peter. Uh, rebuking Jesus in the gospel after he tells them that he must suffer greatly and go to Jerusalem. How can someone successful suffer? And what is the context in which suffering takes place for us as Christians? Suffering has a purpose, has a meaning because of the cross and specifically because of the cross, suffering not only has a meaning but has a reality attached to it. That Jesus himself, the Son of God, came into the world and suffered for us. That's also the great meaning of love. And therefore, the source of our happiness. The cross is the source of happiness and joy for us. It all depends how we understand happiness to be. And that is, I think, the challenge that we have. Because we are told that we must be happy. And we try to be happy. But I think the world offers us a different kind of happiness. The deeply do happiness. And you hear this a lot for the next 20 years that I'm here. The teletubby happiness. You know that superficial happiness that doesn't really have any depth to it or reason to it. But it's just superficial. And I see a lot of people, young people also, you know, they fall into this. And we old as well. I have a friend and sometimes we Skype. But we do, uh, our connection with Mexico is not so good. So sometimes it's better just to keep typing. But you can see the other person there. As opposed to trying to speak and the, the words don't make sense with them. That's another story. That'll be another sermon. But I could see him saying LOL to the things I was saying. But I could see his face and he wasn't laughing. So I asked him, what do you mean by LOL? I was just laughing out loud. I said, I'm looking at you. You're not laughing. I think it becomes a part of us, you know, to think that we just got to pretend that things are going fine and things are going happy when in reality things are, are the opposite. We can create a culture of just 
showing off or, or presenting oneself as joyful. But in reality, our soul is saying something else. Our heart is saying something else. Because people sell to us the idea that we have to be happy. And what that means, we have to be successful in every single thing in life. Successful. Uh, in contrast to the cross. Successful in the fulfillment of one's life as in geared with solely to social success. Our job, our studies, or to health, or to money. I'm successful in the culture that we live today. If people think well of me, or if I have uh, the necessary material things for sustenance, or I have physical health, it is more than that. Then we're one no longer reasons according to God, but according to man. And that's what Jesus brings up to Peter. The way of discipleship that Jesus brings to us is the way of the cross. To follow him, walk behind Jesus, walk with him in the Via Crucis, on the way of the cross. Okay, what does that mean, to follow Jesus? Jesus says, whoever wishes to come after me, must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Does it mean that Jesus wants us to just walk behind him? Is that what it means to follow Christ? That we're just going to look for him and they just walk behind him like in a line and just do whatever he did and follow whatever he does? That's not what Jesus means by every time that he says that we must follow him. It's not a following as if we were playing Simon Says. You know that game? In Mexico, we call it monkeys do. Same game. That a monkey does one thing, which usually tends to be a friend of yours, and then you just do whatever the other person did. That's not what Jesus means by follow me. What Jesus means by follow me is become me. Become me. That is follow me. Love like I love. Become me. Be another me. That is why uh, in a mysterious way, uh, the servant of God, Paul VI, or the venerable Paul VI said, Christ himself accepts death on the cross in order to eradicate from men's heart the sins of self-sufficiency and to manifest to the Father a complete filial obedience. Self-sufficiency. The sin of self-sufficiency. Well, Jesus uh, points out in the Gospel today, what profit will there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Unfortunately, my dear brothers and sisters, we think that the best way to attain love is to search for the love that gives us love to the love that satisfies our need for love. What is the object of love? And how do we live up to the object of love? The object of an action, it brings value to the verb of the action. The object of love must be another. It's God and our neighbor, another human being, outside of ourselves. The illusion that by which we live our lives sometimes is that if we love, there is going to be something or some reciprocity given to us. I love and someone would love me in return. I love so that I may be loved. I follow God so that God may give me what I need. That, my brothers and sisters, creates the center of love in the self. That means that I love so that I may be loved, which means I'm loving just so that I get loved. The object of the action comes back to me. Selfish. It can be love. That's not what Jesus came to do. He came to reconcile all things, to give them to the Father, not even to himself. And to bring us closer to the Father. But the illusion that we have is that we will profit somehow 
In every way that we give love, something will come our way. That is the disappointment that Jeremiah felt in the first reading today. You duped me, Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. What happens with Jeremiah, if you remember the first chapter when the Lord called Jeremiah to be a, a prophet, Jeremiah was afraid of saying yes to the Lord. And the Lord told him and promised him, I will put my words in your mouth. You will speak on my behalf. But Jeremiah at the time, being young, did not understand what that entailed. He thought that he just will become a celebrity perhaps. That everybody will love him. He will be speaking on behalf of God and everybody loves God. But to be a prophet, one must think not as men think, but as God thinks. So what happened later? He was persecuted. He was chastised. He was stoned and rebuked. The interesting thing about Jeremiah is that he did not stop preaching. He did not stop prophesying. Whoever I speak, whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. In other words, he was not saying pretty things. He was not preaching about deepity do stuff. He was actually going into the center, into people's moral core, and he was bringing the word of God, which is never popular, my dear brothers and sisters. Anyone who preaches the word of God to gain popularity is not preaching God by himself. So that's not what Jeremiah was doing. He was speaking the truth, and he knew that it would be a hard truth, a hard fact, something hard for people to swallow. But Jeremiah, did he give up? No. I say to myself, I will not mention him, which is the temptation to stop thinking about God and preaching about God and becoming beacons of God. I will speak in his name no more, he said. But what happened to the heart of Jeremiah? He becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in, and I can not endure it. What happened to Jeremiah is that he became the voice of God. He was not longer himself, but it was God speaking to him, through him. That is what Jesus means when he says, whoever loses his, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The, the reality of love is that when we lose ourselves in it, we really lose ourselves in it. We no longer seek the love of the self, but we seek the one whom we love. And the one whom we love becomes the object of our love. But only in such way can one find fulfillment in life. Will our souls be happy? Will be rejo rejoicing? Because we found the love, the pearl of great price. That which really liberates us. It liberates us because we're no longer entrapped within ourselves. We're looking for the love of the other. Jesus Christ did such thing. Our love, our Lord love in such way. That is the glory of the cross. On the one hand, we have the sin of self-fulfillment, self-sufficiency. And on the other hand, we have the glory of the cross, which leads us, those who are blind to the ignorance into light, loosed all who were held fast by sin, and brought redemption to the whole world and mankind, like St. Cyril says. In other words, when we lose ourselves, we find ourselves. We find who God sees, who is God himself. We ask the Lord this week to give us the grace to learn how to give up ourselves. Let our, go, our pride go. Seek to love the others. Seek to love God himself first. 
And little by little, as we lose ourselves, let him who reigns our life find us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.